Hi, I'm Lisa Murphy, and thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to start our day by doing the Fizzle Bubble Pop and Wow Science Workshop. Yes? Yes, let's do some science. So, the, thank you. Woo! So, um, the neat thing about science, Steve Spangler taught me. Do you all know Steve Spangler? Steve Spangler is a very dear friend and colleague of mine, and he's based out of Colorado. And one of the things he taught me is um, when it comes to science, to, to, to do it right and to do it big and to give it class. Yes, I love that. Do it right, do it big, and give it class. He also taught me that, that a lot of the stuff that we're doing today, he said, Lisa, it's really just a demonstration until the kids start asking questions. And I really want you to take that with you. Um, science sometimes is intimidating. Sometimes we get nervous. We're not sure what to do. New rules come down, and they want us doing science with the kids. Do science. We're like, how do you do science with the twos? How do you do science with the threes? The reality is, is that you're probably already doing science with it. You just didn't quite realize it came under that category. Does that, does that make sense? You do not need a degree in chemistry or biology to be doing, you know, um, science in, in your classroom. And I do like to give credit where credit is due. Um, this workshop originally was uh, created by two women here in California. Their names are Diana McGregor and Sue Corsilia. And a couple of years back, they asked me if I would be willing to kind of take over their baby, adopt their baby, as it were. They, they had put a lot of time and energy into it. And they said, you know what, we're just not wanting to run the roads anymore and do the workshop. Do you want to do it? So of course, what did I say? Of course, I said yes, 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 yes. So we put it together, and as a nod to them, I like to you know, acknowledge that it was them that, uh, that started it. But the other thing I like to tell you is that when I was a young, new teacher, I would go and watch Diana and Sue do this workshop, and it was always so inspiring, because science is, it, it was never, we weren't doing it, or we weren't doing it the best that we possibly could. And it turned into you know, a table wedged in the corner, with a dead plant on it, you know, the science table, and it's got like some lone bird's nest and, and a box of rocks and a couple of magnifying glasses and a fish that only swims to the left, you know? <laughs> and, and so then you'd go and you'd watch Diane and Sue and they would be blowing stuff up and sucking eggs out of bottles and we'd all be like, woo! You know, and you go back on Monday and we started doing all this science. So I want to keep that energy going and keep that spirit going. So we've got six tables behind us filled with a bunch of engaging, appropriate science activities that you can start doing with the kids when you go back. So I'm going to start at this end and I'm going to demonstrate and then I'll invite you to come up and play. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm moving over here. We're going to start with one of our absolutely favorite activities. What is it? Ooblick, cornstarch and water. Have you done this before? Some of you? Yes. Cornstarch and water. Is it science? Yes, it is. Chemistry. Technically, you're creating what we call a non-Newtonian fluid. That sounds fancy, doesn't it? A non-Newtonian fluid. What are you doing? Today, the children are engaged in the creation of a non-Newtonian fluid. Wow! What were you doing? We were playing in the oobleck. So what do I have here? Cornstarch and water mixed together. If you have never felt this before, it is hard and soft and wet and dry, and it feels amazing. I have watched children play with this for 20, 30, 40 minutes at a time. And what do they do with it? They do this. Watch me. They will do that, and they're watching it, and they're feeling it come through their hands. This is great stuff. Um, you can leave this out for a couple days in a row. I like to make sure that you know that. Um, my only caution to you is to not put a lid on it. Because if you do put a lid on cornstarch and water, it can get a little stinky. Does anybody know what I'm... I see some honest nods in the audience. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it grows mold and it gets a little... And it's not like, ooh, that's a little bit stinky. I mean, it's like, wow, it's really nasty. Um, and I don't tell you that to make you nervous or scare you from doing it at all. Just, just, so, just so you know. Leave it out. Leave it out Monday. Then what's going to happen? All that water is going to evaporate. And then you're going to reconstitute it by putting out some warm water. Add some water to it and reconstitute it again. And then, you know, what ends up happening, it's pretty cool, is that four-year-olds start to know what reconstitute means. And it's because you've used the proper word in the proper context. As opposed to out of context and like holding up a flashcard. You know, when it's out of context, you're just holding it up. You say, re, re, consta, toot, toot, toot. It doesn't make any sense. But if you use the right word in the proper context, then the children start to understand what it means. Now, not everybody wants to touch this. Are we in agreement with that? Some of your children do not want to touch that. So you'll notice when you come up and play that I have some wooden spoons up here. because. This